Well, I, uh, I shared with Angelina that I'm just recovering, so uh, I'm going to try to catch my breath here, but I, I guess we should start really at the beginning of how you came up with this idea, how you started writing it. Give us a little of the genesis of the project. Um, well, I, um, the, I wrote it before I ever had anything I'd written become a film, and I wrote it with a great freedom of believing nobody would ever see it. And so I, I sat down and um, I wanted to understand grief. And I think because of my mother's passing and certain aspects of her life where she was very unfulfilled as an artist and, a, and as a woman. And so I wanted to, to meditate on that. And I, and I think uh, this, and have the freedom to, to work in with thinking of film, not, uh, not thinking of the audience, not thinking of what would be commercial, not thinking of how to answer everything, but just to, 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 to be in a place with these people. And so picked three different couples that represented a different time, one who had yet to experience it, one couple who were sitting right in the middle of it, and then another, uh, the two older men who have come out the other end of it and understand it. And, um, and so I just drove one couple up to a hotel and then wrote from the beginning to the end. And, and when I didn't quite know what to do, we'd either go to the bar and have a conversation or I'd go somewhere else. And, and, it, and, it, just, um, and it just kind of evolved that way. So you wrote it from beginning to end. There wasn't an informing image or kind of a central, uh, where did the sea come in, you know, and, and the fishermen? I don't know. I mean, I suppose many people in this room are filmmakers, yes? And so when you, sometimes you make a film and you'll do things and somebody will tell you, what does this mean? Did you mean this? Or was this a metaphor for? And sometimes you don't even quite understand yourself what and why. Some people say that the sea is symbolic of the womb, or the sea is freedom, or the sea is endless, or the, you know, there's many different, I'm not sure why. It felt like they needed to go to the end of the earth and deal with something. Um, and, and I think having such a difficult story and so much pain, I wanted to put it in a place that was very beautiful, uh, in that, one, to help the audience have something nice, <laughs> but, <laughs> but also to, uh, to say that, look, you know, you can see these two and they drive in and this, they seem to have everything in the world. And, and because you're in pain, everything is that, that beautiful room is a prison. And, uh, and nothing is beautiful. It's all quite, it's all actually quite ugly and horrible. And in writing it from beginning to end, obviously there are moments of revelation along the way, you know, where you kind of reveal, you peel back some of what's going on between the couple. Was that in your first your first go, or did you come back? How, how did you, you know, kind of massage the story? I wish I had a really intelligent answer, but, <laughs> but I did something really profound. I don't know, really. I, I just... Um, I kept trying to understand something. I didn't know if in the end she was gonna kill herself and jump off the rocks or if she was gonna, I didn't know where I would come to terms. I think I was really looking to understand, uh, I was really looking to understand it. And so I didn't really know if, if he could, if she could, if there was anything that was gonna turn it around. And I, wa I wasn't sure. And I, maybe that's what, what leads it in this direction. You think it's going that way because I think for a, th a while when I was writing it, I thought it was going that way. I, I definitely thought it was going that way in the scene where she obviously walks to the cliff, is looking at the ocean, you know, then in the bathtub. I'm glad it didn't go that way. What, what about the, the time period? In other words, was that something you had in mind from the beginning when you sat down and wrote? I mean, it's kind of timeless, but, you know, you get a sense that it is kind of set maybe in the 70s, the music, the score. Talk, talk a little about, you know, what time period you saw, how you chose that, and the score also, which I thought was very much a part of creating a, a mood and an ambience. Mm, thank you. Um, I, I th just, the 70s was such a uh, extraordinary time for film and politics and it was just a, and I was, I, mean, I was born in the 70s, so I think I, you're always interested in when you were younger and what your parents might have been like and what that time was and your reference point. But I, but I found it a really compelling time for, for art. Um, and there was a certain freedom in films uh, at that time and certain films of that time, I think, also discussed very heavy things. And, and um, so in a way, it's not, there wasn't a particular film that I was trying to copy, but there was a feeling that 
if I could just allow myself to remember those ti those films and the time they took and the and the nuance and the and and the heaviness of the subject matter. So it was it was inspiring. The score, though, I I mean, to me, I, uh, the score reminded me of uh, Alan Rene. It reminded me of Antonioni. I mean, it did remind me of some of the late '60s, early '70s. I'm curious. Just talk a little about the score. Oh well, um, it's all those all those would be <laughs> very. Uh, um, uh, we would love to to be in that vein. I think that's what we were all inspired by. Gabrielle Yared is an extraordinary um, composer, and so and we talked before we went into this. And Brad's here, and he'll know as we before we started. I said we thought it was a comedy, so <laughs> I may have said that to him a few times. <laughs> and uh, and we'd listened to a lot of Harry Nielsen, and we thought, ah, oh, this this is gonna be this is this like off the the rocks thing, and then the grief just took over, and it somehow, um, it was always there, but I think it was that question of how how much to, because because there's also an absurdity to to it all, to life, and so I think you have moments of complete uh, silliness and irreverence, and then you go to the bottom, and it's, so we wanted to kind of capture both, and and so I think there is that, there's a whimsy, there's a, to to the music in a way, there's a sadness and there's a playfulness, and um, and then it's also a sparse in places, which was very interesting to do with Gabriel Yared, because if anyone knows him, wrote the English Patient and many things, and he is, we have basically told him to sit on his hands many times because he could write circles over the, you know, he, it was it was beautiful to watch him have to simplify, and uh, and fall into a, uh, the tone of this and. Um, and I, I think he did a beautiful job. It really helped. It really helped me in the editing room and making the film. I started to work to the music. You, you, you talked about the editing. Um, there were. You know, how did when you wrote it? Did you imagine there would be flash cuts? That there would be like kind of impressionistic suggestions? No, and I didn't know. And still, I'm not sure if <laughs> you know. It's a. It it, it felt. When we f and it's an interesting thing to try with because of course of course you try with a flash and immediately everybody you, you can go so quickly into it's a flashback of something specific or it's it's a, you have a certain sound and everybody thinks it's a car accident or you have the sound of a baby crying and they think ah oh, the baby was alive and then you know so every little thing it was as a director it was really extraordinary to to understand how the tiniest thing suggests so much and to be so careful. Um, and in the end, the flashes became uh, her internal and what was going on, and, and that I think in, there's, I hope that in the beginning, maybe you thought that it was a sexual memory and just sex, and then at a point you realize that it's the sex is the fertility and the making of a baby, and so it goes from something that's quite erotic to and suggestive to something that's actually quite the heartbeat and the blood and the fa which is the thing that's raising her heartbeat, and it's. It's different, and it and it um, and it takes over. It starts to take over her. Uh, I suppose, in a way, it was illustrating her madness um, or her emotion. You know, you mentioned uh, that it was a comedy at one point when you and Brad were talking about. Well, well, we're, there there are moments where the audience laughed, and 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 there is some whimsy in the creation of the whole peephole and the voyeurism that shared. Where, where did that idea come from? I'll never tell. <laughs> All right, I tried. <laughs> um, now you said when you when you wrote it, you never imagined that it would be made, and I'm assuming that means you never imagined you'd be playing it and your husband would be playing it. So how how did that happen? Uh, how did that happen, honey? <laughs> um, I. Uh... I, I think, well, it, of course you write with what you know in your mind, so I wrote a little bit with us in my head, just the characters, what I know. I, I'm a woman more of Vanessa's age and her, you know, and so this would be a marriage, and a marriage is from, familiar, so we had a... And we and when I first uh, showed it to Brad years ago, we talked about it, and he was very um, supportive, and and uh, but it was kind of that funny, crazy one that was just on my desk, and that was the... You know, it was almost referred to as the one you'd never do, and the... The one that's just well, you know that would that would be a crazy idea that would be, but but at a certain point I think as artists we all get to that place where we we want to do the crazy one and we want to not feel safe and we want to remember what it is to just play and and uh, maybe we make a mess but we want to remember what it is to to be 
free. And, and that's, uh, and so I think we, f we were feeling that and, and wanted to just go out and, and be together and work together and try something and, and succeed or fail. We wanted to do it together. So. When you uh, are directing, how close were you to the script that you actually wrote? Pretty close. It ended up pretty close. There, there wasn't much improvisation. We did, we did improv, and um, but but uh, but most of what's in the film was the script. It came kind of back. We we did improv, and I think in a way the improv on this film almost helped just to keep keep us open because we'd we'd try things and we'd it's, it'd be like stretching your muscles and you'd know you could go that far but you'd kind of pull it back and then when you pulled it back you were somewhere a little more open than you were before but you went too far for the actual film <laughs> you know the 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 improvs often got they weren't bad they were they were it was tempting to make the comedy what well, was there anything in the film though that you hadn't you know, conceived when you wrote it was, you know, in terms of uh, the performance and, and, and the storyline. There, there were always scenes, there were certain scenes that, that we'd work on and there were certain scenes that Brad would push me on and, and, it, and it would evolve, like the, the scene where he's um, right before, when, it, when he goes very far and he catches her playing cards and it gets very aggressive. There's scenes where that kind of grew with his input, and so I think everybody's, uh, the actors would, you know, there was, there was certainly, but it, it was the same scene, but it was, you know, it grew. So you wrote, you directed, your, how do you evaluate your own performance? That's just something I've always wondered about, uh, anybody who directs and acts in their own films, you know, how you evaluate your own performance. It's actually a horror. It's not something I'll ever want to do do again. It was it was actually my least favorite thing about the whole process. The nice thing about being a director is that you don't have to get in hair and makeup and watch yourself. <laughs> That's the. Um, I I don't know. It was I don't think I was very. Um, it it wasn't a play. It was also because she was she's such a fragile. She's every part of me that doesn't know what to do and is in pain, and then the director is the person that has to be the one that knows exactly what to do and not bring her emotions to the set. So the kind of, the back and forth of it was very, uh, it, some, sometimes I felt it really wasn't working. And, and I was too emotional as a director and I was too aggressive as the actor. <laughs> and, and, uh, and so I had the script supervisor, this woman, Kristen, who I worked with on my previous film. She's just a really strong woman who knows me very well. And I said to her before we'd started, I'm just gonna tell you what I think that I should be emoting as an actress, and will you please tell me if you think I'm not doing a good enough job? And so she would watch some of the takes, and I'd say, D was I vulnerable enough? Did you, what did you read into that scene? And then she'd say, mm, I think you, we need to do one more because you did. So we, she, she kind of, in a way, was my, um, my bar as a woman. And so you didn't play back, you know, on set? I don't like watching myself on, on film, and I haven't seen some of my films, and I don't, it was, so and and I think the and the first pass of the film I was really um I had taken care of her last and so the first cut of the film she was really she's not very likable now I know but she was really not likable <laughs> in the first. So I I think it you know you, you feel bad taking care of yourself. You feel like you shouldn't as a as a director you feel responsible to take care of every single other actor and you feel wrong that you're focusing on yourself. Right. So you do that last and you do that so are you saying though that in the editing process it's you basically kind of remove yourself and then look at the cut instead of kind of being right in there with the editor having to evaluate that's my take that's Brad's take you know that's that's yeah, the editor and I this woman Patricia is so and she often had to have the she had the final say on my scenes uh -huh. not my you know not the whole but my performance my side of it I would say I really don't like that and she'd say you're wrong you can't see it so we would uh, she would have to be so really, I relied on these different women to tell me what they were feeling from the performance, and I, because I, I was blocked sometimes. Sometimes I would just say, "Oh, just cut that whole thing." It's not, you know. It's not, it's, 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 so. On set, you know, how do you approach blocking a scene? I mean, uh, it was interesting. There seemed to be a lot of uh, still frames, you know, where action happened, and then you chose certain moments to use camera movement. I'm curious, you know, just kind of how you approach a scene constructing a scene? Well, for this, we felt it was, we wanted it to be um, 
not like a play, but to, to, that you're living in the room with them. And so, and you can look where you want to look, that the, we're not, I'm not as the director telling you, you should focus on this person and then this person or this thing. If you, if you hold a frame, the eye tends to wander and the, each of you may be looking for something else. And I, and I think that was important. And we had, because of Christian Berger, who's such a wonderful DP, he uses this system called the C system and he reflects natural light. So there's very few lights in the, on the stage in the room. So it really does feel like there's nobody in the room. And, uh, and so that allows you to move in the space um, in a way that you normally don't. And uh, so that's why. And then we, I mean, I think the only, the only thing that was really decided in a, in a way was to force ourselves to allow the time to sit with shots because we know that the instinct today is to cut as much as possible. <laughs> and, and to, uh, to kind of start to close it in and get darker as we went. We wanted to have the three stages emotionally slightly, slightly suggested in, without it being obvious in the, in the framing and the shots. There were two scenes where you used camera movement that did st stood out in my mind. One was the scene where you take the young couple out uh, for dinner and drinks. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that kind of stood out in that there was a, a kind of movement, like you're saying, mm -hmm. uh, that was much different from a, of the rest of the film. I think sometimes, well, I think it's, I think the camera is sometimes, is, it's the emotion, it's, it can be, you know, when things feel stale and stagnant, then sometimes this, the shot is stale and stagnant, and when, and when there's kind of, your things are moving around, and there's, they're all drinking a little too much, and you're not sure, and everybody's feeling each other, you kind of feel that that, that then feels right. Um, so I, I think it's that, as you get into a scene, you just try to imagine what the, what, what that moment should, should feel like. There was another scene, which is where um, Brad asked you to get up and dance, and then you dance. And, and I have to say, I, I was surprised by my own reaction to that scene. I almost got chills. I, I'm not, you know, the, the, the way it ended, it ended on quite a unique shot. Uh, I don't know if it was a reflection. Of, it was uh, the ceiling, yeah. Can you talk a little about that scene? Um, yes, we, uh, that was one of those that we didn't know. Uh, how, if it went too far, it was that to try to find where she would just start to crack, and that and that being a being a dancer and being somebody whose body had failed her, that when she is brought back to that place, then everything would then come out, and that and that if you you know in part of her healing, he wants to help her to get back into that moment, and but but being there is just too much, and it uh, and it brings back all the memories and all the pain, and somehow um, so we. And then we and we did plan this kind of mirror to see if we could fracture. But you know, you walk that fine line of we don't want to get too arty and too strange in a way that's distracting for the audience, but we do want to try to explain what's happening with her emotionally, um, and and make sure it stays emotional and doesn't get too, you know, too interesting and cool with shots. You know, you want it to just emotion. And um, but it was a very funny day because Brad and I will still call it my crazy dance day, where I just. Uh, we pulled away and you had to just, with all abandoned dance, the outtakes of that are just, <laughs> I think everybody in that, we were in this one of the, you know, you shoot a movie and you have all the extras around who are from the area and they all think, oh, it's so lovely. We're seeing this couple and they're dancing. It's so nice. And then they just think, what happened to her? <laughs> and I just started dancing on, and it went on for just two minutes, not even in the, and so it just, it's, it, but it's really a wonderful, it was a wonderful moment of complete abandon um, to, to, and then to allow the, the pain to come in and in public and however it is and what is that, that feeling that people have where they just even forget where they are because they're so overwhelmed. So how well, to, you know, now before we open it up to the audience, um, you, you're on the verge, of, the film is opening next week. Mm -hmm. So obviously it's a very different film than most commercial films. And, and as I, I, you know, kind of gave you my three line, you know, the existential erotic thriller. Uh, it's very powerful, but you're going to go out, and I, I think you're very brave, too, because it's really uh, dealing with motions that a lot of commercial cinema doesn't anymore. So I'm curious how you prepare yourself to step out there right now with this, this work you've done. You come to directors first. <laughs> to get yourself braced. Um, I don't know. I'm fortunate. I'm I'm on a plane the day that I think everything comes out about it. I'm I'm uh, I'm on a plane to Cambodia. So <laughs> gonna. I don't know. You know, it's one of those. You uh, other films that I've done have deal with history, and there's a there's a way that you can excuse yourself and say, "Well, I did my best work, but I know it's important because it's history." 
and it's somebody else's life and it's somebody else's script and or whatever it may be. And and this one, I think I am, I'm a little uncomfortable because it's hard to believe or it's hard to feel like you want to say to somebody, I want you to come and sit for two hours and and see if you can connect and if we can connect as people. And if you, if if this I this expression of art and pain and grief is something worth asking somebody to sit through. And but, it's, so it's, it's, it feels very, it feels very different. It feels uh, but you know, what's interesting, I mean, what I found interesting is that you did decide in the end, and I mean, some might call it the American instinct, you know, that it does end on a sense that somehow this couple will find a way that that's how I read it. I'm not sure how you meant it, but, uh, it didn't end with a suicide. It didn't end with a kind of existential tragedy unanswered. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. Well, I think we wanted to, um, I was, as it was our honeymoon, um, we wanted to uh, also say, I think it said something about marriage and that, you know, there's a lot today where you very quickly uh, just start to get mad at each other and then that's it. And you fight and you hate each other and you can find reasons to, and and it's, uh, and what I li I think the one thing that saves them is from all that they do and the way they act, they there's a nobility to sticking it out together and working through and that at no point you feel like they're just going to walk away or maybe you think they should and you almost wish he would but they don't and they're going to push through and it's going to get really ugly and it's never going to be perfect but but they're going to keep trying and I think that that's that's a worthy message. Absolutely. I see that, uh, unfortunately, we're going to have to wrap it up. Angelina, I want to congratulate you and thank you so much, and Brad, both of you, for a very, very bold and brave thing. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here.